this is an important though rare but an important long case in our clinical examination so what is right iliac fossa uh, to know this we have to know the basic uh, divisions of abdomen we know that we have nine regions in the abdomen so dividing the abdomen into nine regions uh, we know that this is epigastric region this is umbilical this is hypogastrium this is uh, right hypochondrium right lumbar this is uh, right iliac this is left hypochondrium left lumbar and left iliac so uh, this is what the topic we are going to study so right iliac mass so we need to know what are all the structures that are present in the right iliac fossa now one uh, it is very important structure cecum number two arteries related to cecum number three veins related to cecum number four lymph nodes which are related in and around the cecum uh, number five an important small structure appendix number six ovary right ovary so uh, a fossa right iliac fossa mass can be a pathology of any one of these structures so we need to think in all the aspects okay but based on exam point of view we have only we need to concentrate very importantly on two swellings and also the next important one swelling so what are all the three important masses that we have to concentrate for exam or in exam point of view number one appendix mass number two ileocecal tb number three is cecal ca or ca cecum so these are all the these are the three common exam based masses which are present in the right iliac fossa so we are going to see what are all the features of an appendicular mass what are all the features of ileocecal db and what are all the features of carcinoma cecum after knowing all those features it would be easier for us to ask histories pertaining to the so before going to this topic uh, assume that you are a surgeon and sitting in op how will, uh, how will a right iliac fossa mass patient present to you with he may present uh, the most common complaint that the patient will present is abdominal pain especially right iliac fossa pain or features of obstructions like vomiting abdominal distension uh, constipation sometimes diarrhea uh, and so on these are some features of obstruction especially pain is a very important finding now let's uh, go into detail about this appendicular mass so beginning with appendicular mass what is appendicular mass to know this we need to know a bit about the anatomy so if we assume uh, this as a cecum okay cecum which have which ascends as ascending colon then we have transverse colon and so on and we have an important structure which connects to this cecum that is ileum and we have ileocecal junction here and then we have another small important structure that is appendix we have variable position of appendix the appendix can be a retrocecal which is behind the cecum and that is a very common position of a cecum which contributes for 75 percentage which contributes in 75 percentage of individuals and number two is pelvic which present in the pelvic region sometimes can be pre ileal post ileal or paracecal sometimes in and around the cecum and these are all the different uh, positions of the cecum and very important point to note is retrocecal is the most common presentation of a uh, position of uh, appendix followed by pelvic and this contributes just to 5% those uh, sub uh, ileal i mean pre ileal post ileal paracecal or very rare positions of an appendix so uh, now what will happen in case of an appendicitis in case of an ap acute appendicitis we know that this appendix is a vestigial organ we know that this appendix is a vestigial organ which of course they don't have any uh, they don't contribute in any uh, specific uh, gi functions and so on it is just a hollow viscous organ which is present simply what is the reason for that appendicitis what is the reason for that inflammation and appendix is obstruction normally this will be in direct communication with the cecum but whenever there is an obstruction here 
there is an obstruction in the lumen or in the opening or in the beginning of appendix the distal region will get infected and that will produce post to inflammation of the appendix and the most common obstruction is because of fecolith fecal material in which we have a stone and that stone comes and blocks here which leads to distal infection of the appendicular uh, septum which leads to inflammation of the appendix okay so let me tell you how this appendicitis progress to a mass initially we will have acute inflammation of our appendix acute inflammation of this appendix so the patient will present with an acute abdominal pain and the pain will be initially on the epigastric region which gets on progressive on the subsequent days it progresses to the uh, or it localized to the right iliac region initially it will be in the epigastric region and definitely the patient will have tenderness on the right iliac region neck burning standards everything which will, i will be discussing in uh, later on so let's see the pathology after infection what happens is there is an inflammation of this appendix so after inflammation we will have all the acute inflammatory signs of appendix that we will be dealing with later then what contributes to that appendicular mass so we need to study about appendicular mass appendix per se will not cause any uh, appendix per se appendicular inflammation per se will not cause any mass which can be palpated then what contributes to, to that mass is naturally we have a mechanism to protect the spread of infection so what will happen is in and around region of this appendix will be having all those inflammatory because since it is an acute inflammation you will have inflammatory mediators which pour into these region and this region gra uh, i mean forms a lump like structure so what are all the structures that are involved in an appendicular masses 40 to 72 hours after an acute episode of this appendicitis all this terminal cecum appendix the mesentery related to it and uh, lymph nodes in and around the uh, cecum all these structure they will clump together and they will form a granulomatous like mass which is called as appendicular mass and that appendicular mass is palpable let me tell you the definition of appendicular mass once again appendicular mass is a mass in the right iliac fossa which occurs 48 to 72 hours after an acute episode of acute i mean after an acute episode of appendicitis because of formation of a granulomatous like lesion or uh, because a lump which is formed because of pouring of all those inflammatory mediators and the structures which are involved in this appendicular mass is cecum uh, uh, terminal ilium appendix lymph nodes in and around and also the mesentery so this appendicular mass will be palpable this appendicular mass will be irregular in shape on palpation this appendicular mass is fixed since cecum and appendix is a retroperitoneal organ and this appendicular mass will be soft firm in consistency so this rules out carcinoma cecum which which is hard in consistency and so on and then coming so this is what the palpatory findings that you can see let me repeat the palpatory finding once again that will be soft firm in consistency that will be an irregular swelling that swelling will be fixed it will not move at the same time it involves all these structures and you will have tenderness since it is an acute condition when we leave this process without giving antibiotics that will further progress to appendicular abscess that is one of the complication at the same time another complication of this append acute appendicitis is perforation when this goes for perforation automatically there will be leakage of all these infected materials into the peritoneal structure causing diffuse peritonitis of an abdomen that's why acute appendicitis is a surgical emergency i guess i have completed I have given an overview of this uh, appendicular mass. Okay, and uh, let us discuss a few features about an acute appendicitis. So, the very common presentation of an acute appendicitis is three that we call it as Murphy's triad, which is number one, pain, number two, vomiting number three it is fever so pain vomiting and fever is what murphy's triad is and these three are the classical features of an acute appendicitis so uh, speaking a bit about the pain the pain will initially be in the epigastric region and then it gets localized to the right iliac fossa vomiting the patient will have a non-projectile vomiting and fever and the fever will be sometimes like a high grade fever and when this goes for abscess formation the patient will have associated chills and rigors <clears throat> and then we have specific signs and uh, uh, tests to rule out this appendicitis 
uh, sign number one is uh, one second. So uh, one important sign is rho sinc sign, where uh, you know um, when we give uh, pressure on the left iliac fossa, we will have tenderness on the right iliac fossa because uh, when we give pressure here, no. This will push the, all the intestinal content on the right side, so that will produce a pain. This is what a rosing sign is. McBurney's point is where the junction of medial two third and lateral two third of an imaginary line drawn between anterior superior iliac spine and umbilicus. And McBurney's tenderness is also an important finding. When you press on the McBurney's point, definitely the patient will have an acute tenderness. Uh, rosing sign is there, and uh, there is something called as Sharon's triangle. Sharon's triangle is a triangle which is formed by three points. One is uh, this, uh, pubic symphysis, one is umbilicus and the next one is anterior superior iliac spine. So anterior superior iliac spine, pubic symphysis and umbilicus forms this Sharon's triangle and you will have hyperesthesia in this Sharon's triangle in case of an acute appendicitis. And then uh, another condition which, press, which will have the exact same clinical feature of acute appendicitis is mesenteric lymphadenitis. Mesenteric lymphadenitis what there is inflammation of the lymph nodes present in and around the mesentery here. So the patient will have the same pain in the right iliac fossa, the patient will have vomiting and fever. Then how do you rule out this mesenteric lymphadenitis from an acute appendicitis? So we have a specific test called as Klein's test. Klein's test is where what we do is you know, we actually press on the McBurney's point. Definitely the patient will have tenderness in case of both uh, acute appendicitis as well as mesenteric lymphadenitis. And then uh, pressing simultaneously on the McBurney's point as the patient to lie down on the left recommended position. So initially the patient will be supine and will be pressing on the McBurney's point. Simultaneously pressing as the patient to turn to the left. In case of mesenteric lymphadenitis the pain will disappear since the abdominal content goes below because the patient is turning to the left it will go below and you will not touch the mesenteric part that's why the tenderness will go on uh, but in case of an acute appendicitis the pain will be there the tenderness will persist even if the patient turns to the left reason is appendix is a retroperitoneal organ which does not move even on moving the position that's why you will have tenderness even though the patient is on the left recommended position and that sign is called as Klein sign, K L E I N, Klein sign. Okay, understood. So these are all some of the important tests uh, to uh, find whether it is acute appendicitis and to rule out other causes of this Murphy's trait. So uh, coming to the treatment part, how will you? Oh, sorry, in, coming to the inf investigation part, how will you investigate this? Apart from routine investigation, which is VT, CT, ESR, uh, TCDC. Um, uh, what is that? Urine sugar, albumin deposits, uh, chest X-rays, ECG, and uh, blood sugar, and all those routine investigation. Specifically, what we do for this region is ultrasound. By checking on the ultrasound, what we can find is we can find whether the inflammation, when, whether there is an inflammation of this appendic re appendicular region or this appendix, uh, whether there is uh, dilation of this appendix, where, whether there is any obstruction on the lumen of the appendix, uh, whether the appendix has ruptured or not, whether it has caused any diffuse peritoneum, and involvement of lymph nodes can be find uh, can be found through this ultrasound. Ultrasound itself is sufficient for first of all clinical examination itself is sufficient to diagnose a patient to be having an acute appendicitis But we go for ultrasound as an investigation So ultrasound is more than enough to go for surgery But still if we suspect some other pathologies like ileocecal TB or CA carcinoma Then we have to offer some other investigation and some other investigations are uh, X-ray in erect x-ray of the abdomen in erect position contrast enhanced computer tomography uh, to check for all those adjacent structures and also we can opt for MRI if we suspect carcinoma. Specifically, uh, okay, let me tell you that in abdominal. So this is what all about investigation of an appendicular mass is. And how will you treat this appendicular mass? The treatment is conservative. Initially, we should, we should not go for surgery. The reason why we don't go for surgery in case of an appendicular mass is I told you that that forms an inflammatory granulomatous like um, lump. So appendix will be adherent to the adjacent structure and it is difficult to operate at that time. So what we do is initially we manage the patient conservatively by giving antibiotics, by maintaining proper fluids, uh, IV fluids and then uh, what we do is uh, 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 
actually the patient will also have obstruction if the patient is having obstruction then every features of obstruction will be there there will be uh, you know uh, constipation so to relieve constipation we have to give drugs uh, we should not give anything nil i mean the, the patient should be nil per oral for 3 days reason is there is an obstruction the patient will not uh, they will not have a proper flow in the jet so we should give everything on iv routes and also uh, we have to check for pulse uh, uh, all this vitals we have to check reason is sometimes this appendicular mass can go for appendicular abscess or peritonitis complications that will uh, actually shoot up all those inflammatory mediation like increased heart rates temperature will increase like so we need to check for we need to constantly monitor the vitals of the patient and also we have to maintain two things we should not do we should not do surgery at the same time we should not give anything orally since there is an obstruction so uh when we do it no when we have this conservative treatment which is called as oshner sharan treatment oshner sharan treatment conservative treatment we have to wait for a week and then if everything subsides like if the pulse rate comes down if the pain and tenderness decreases if the mass becomes very soft and at last when there is uh, uh, you know disappearance of this mass then we do interval interval appendicectomy after 6 week of acute episode of appendicitis so initially we manage the patient conservatively and then we go for interval appendicectomy after 6 weeks i told you the reason why we don't uh, we, we should not do appendicectomy immediately after we find the symptom the reason is the appendix will be adherent to the adjacent structure since there is acute inflammation in and around the appendix so it will be difficult for the surgeon to check for or to exactly locate the appendix and remove so this is what all about appendicular mass is and we have make sure that you also study about the surgical steps of appendicectomy which examiner which is examining examiner's favorite question okay now coming to another uh, diagnosis that is what ileocecal tbs ileo cecal tb actually tuberculosis is a disease which per se confine uh, to the lungs but it also has extra inters extra pulmonary manifestation it can affect any organ of the body and very common organ to get affected next to lungus intestine so in even in the intestine we have different sites that can be affected like it can affect the bowel it can affect the mesentery it can affect the root of mesentery even it can affect extra intestinal organs like spleen liver pancreas bones and everything you know and a very common site to get affected in the gi tract is ileocecal region i mean the terminal ileum and the cecal region is where the lodgement of this mycobacterium tuberculosis is and the very common lodgement the reason why that is the most common site for this lodgement of bacteria and infection at that region is we have four reasons for this one is there occurs a temporary stasis of food particles in the ileocecal junction so that provokes a favorable site for the infection to occur number 2 there is an alkaline medium that uh, favors for the infection and number 3 uh, it is uh, you know uh, maximum absorption of food takes place there that actually stimulates or provokes that forms a favorable medium and that region is richer in lymphatics so these are all the four reasons why ileo i mean uh, tuberculosis is very common at the ileocecal region so what is the features of this uh, ileocecal mass so uh, Uh, before going to that clinical feature we need to know that we have two types of uh, ileocecal tb one is ulcerative ileocecal tb and the next one is proliferative ileocecal tb ulcerative ileocecal tuberculosis is where there is multiple ulceration in the terminal ileum and that ulcerations are transverse sometimes that ulcerations can go for complications like stricture formation and that ulcerative ileocecal tb is quite dangerous compared to this proliferative proliferative ileocecal tb is where there occurs a granulomatous cicatrization granulomatous fibrosis of the ileocecal valve which provokes for obstructive feature here you will have ulcerations malina diarrhea and so on in case of ulcerative ileocecal tb in case of hyperplastic and proliferative ileocecal tb is where features of obstructions will be there you know uh, th there will be cicatrization there will be an abdominal palpable lump and so on so these are all the these are the two gross uh, types of uh, uh you know ileocecal tuberculosis and how, what are the features like uh features will be uh pain will be a feature there will be uh an abdominal lump tenderness will be there and very commonly features of obstructions will be there like vomiting uh, uh constipation abdominal distensions and so on 
So how will you investigate the? How will you suspect? Like after uh, you are, if you are suspecting that as a case of ileocecal TB, then we have to offer specific investigations. Number one, check whether the primary focus is lungs or per se the primary focus is ileocecal region. If the primary focus is lungs, then the most common modality, I mean presentation, will be ulcerative ileocecal TB. If the primary focus per se is itself is ileocecal region, then it will be a hyperplastic or proliferative ileocecal tuberculosis. Go for Montax test. Uh, check for uh, sputum culture, AFB staining, you know, all the uh, uh, investigations which are related per se to the tuberculosis. Check for all those things and then treat with anti tuberculous drugs. Okay, the treatment initially is anti tuberculous drugs. So, this is what conservative treatment. Then, what is the role of surgery in case of ileocecal TB? If there is obstruction and that obstruction is not relieved by this anti tubercular drugs, then we have to go for surgical modality. If there is multiple stricture formations, then that becomes an indication for surgery. At the same time, um, you know, uh, if the ulcers go for perforation, that is also one of the indication for surgery. So, what will you do? In case of strictures, just relieve the strictures with the help of, uh, you know, some props or something like that. That procedure is called as stricturoplasty. If you have multiple ulcers over a side, just resect that part of ileum and anastomosis and make an anastomosis with the cecal, ileocecal and make an ileocecal anastomosis. Or if you have any granulomatous arterization mass, then resect that mass and make anastomosis. Simple. The surgery is simple. Just resect that region which is, which is pathologically, uh, you know, which is involved and then make an anastomosis. This is what the treatment modality for uh, ileocecal TB is. And then uh, coming to the carcinoma cecum, it is a very, uh, you know, rare condition, but still we have to suspect carcinoma cecum if the tumor is a hard palpable mass, there is a history of anorexia, history of loss of appetite, loss of weight, you know, the mass is immobile, then we have to suspect carcinoma cecum. Then go for investigations like uh, CECT, MRI to rule out all those uh, nodal involvement and so on. And the specific tumor marker, carcinoma embryonogenic uh, antigen, you, have, you can check all those things. And there is TNM st uh, staging and uh, the treatment is hemicolectomy. You just remove the half part of the colon, large colon itself. I mean, middle of the transverse colon and the whole right colon and cecum along with adjacent structures and lymph node is a treatment of idiosic, I mean, uh, carcinoma cecum. So, I guess I have uh, gave a gross idea about the features of um, right iliac fossa mass. And then uh, you need to suspect some other features. So, what are all the differential diagnosis for an appendicular mass? So, it can be ileocecal TB, it can be uh, carcinoma cecum, it can be an abscess that is psoas abscess, or it can be an aneurysm like uh, this, uh, you know, uh, mesenteric. Uh, uh, ileocolic artery comes there, uh, ileocecal artery is there, so ileocecal arterial aneurysms can present with the right iliac fossa mass and the, uh, if it is a aneurysmal mass then you will have an expansile pulsations or else mesenteric lymphadenitis sometimes in case of a female patient ovarian tumors can present very rarely even gallbladder can present as a right iliac fossa mass so we need to give a differential diagnosis if the examiner asks for this. I hope you enjoyed this video, stay tuned, bye.